an overview of what um, operations management entails with this operations system model okay so um first we've got a business strategy everything starts with a business strategy so let's take for example an organization like shell mobile for example large multinational organizations they would have several business units across the world okay now the business strategy would have to come from the headquarters okay this year we want to use our carbon footprint that group level strategy would have to be cascaded to individual business units across the world and those business units depending on their resources and with resources we mean skill sets we need money we need all that they will implement in the context of their business units okay because it is very very unreasonable for a particular company operating in say a certain part of the world say like maybe for example if i say sub-saharan africa and the uk the operations model will be entirely different why not because there's a difference it's um, in, in in the company practice but let's take for instance labor cost is cheaper in some parts of the world so you might be able to be more labor intensive in some parts of the world and in some parts of the world there is higher technological attainment so you might want to be more um, technology intensive so these are all um, variations to how you implement your business so everything starts with the group level strategy and within the business strategy the overall business strategy you ex you extract your objectives for your operation strategy and now within your operation strategy you need to define your procedures you need to define the workload so how many people will it take to implement this operation strategy okay what are the kpis kpis are key performance indicators what measures are we going to put in place to ensure that we're achieving the strategy we've stated or the objectives we stated at the beginning of of our financial year or business cycle okay we need to establish standards as well so what will we use what will we benchmark ourselves against are we going to benchmark ourselves against other companies are we going to benchmark ourselves against established standards or are we going to benchmark ourselves against um, the, the same company within the same group so for example you could benchmark um, the uni um, shell in, in 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 the uk against shell in the us or shell in in, in africa so it's the same group of co company but again you have different business units okay now once you've decided on that and you've decided you need to determine your inputs to the operations process now your inputs naturally don't have deliberately left this as 5ms it's universally known as 5ms but i've kind of called it try to call it 4mp so it is money manpower method materials and machines but i've changed it to 4mp so money methods materials machines and people okay so um then once you've determined that how much you need how many people you need what methods would you use to implement um your strategy what materials do you need which of course with materials we mean raw materials and spare parts for your equipment and then the machines then you need to transform your raw materials into into outputs by executing your plan okay now prior to that you can see here we've got something called quality assurance with quality assurance you try to predict that all of your inputs would give you the desired output that is quality assurance quality assurance is that element of quality that you implement before at the beginning of the process okay so you try to predict your output quality through quality assurance okay now operations management or operations in general deals with the transition of inputs to outputs okay so here let's take an example of um i know a lot of you have done dynamics you've done vibration you've done acoustic so let's take an example of a laboratory exercise you collect raw data from a vibrating equipment, for example, and that data will be in time domain. 
Okay, so it will be a bunch of sinusoidal with amplitude against time. So that raw data will be in time domain. Now, it is very difficult to predict, say, machine health using time domain data because it's a combination of several waveforms, which is very complex to analyze, okay? Which is why people do fast Fourier transformation to move time domain data into frequency domain data so you can easily see the peaks. So that transformation, you've added some value. So FFT, fast Fourier transformation, is a value addition process to your original time domain raw signal so for, so as to achieve the frequency domain spectrum okay and then so that is basically the same concept and once you've gotten your output you again need to implement quality control now with quality control you're checking whether the quality measures you predicted at the start were actually achieved. So if you take a welding exercise as an example, an example of quality assurance process would be to select the right electrode for a particular base metal. Now, quality control activity on the other side would be for you to check the porosity of the weld or check the strength of the weld. Did you actually get the right um, penetration between the base metals? Okay, so that's, and you could use things like die penetrant check or radiography so those are all quality control activities okay now once you've determined your inputs you need to also check let's say for instance you did check and some of your raw materials or some of your inputs did not meet up to the standard let's say you were unable to achieve this and you check the problem was from one of your inputs you can either change that input if you change any of those inputs, that would, that's what's referred to as first order change, okay? Of course, there's also the scenario of doing nothing, which is a very good scenario in business operations as well. You could decide to do nothing, but please only do nothing when you know that the consequences of doing nothing is insignificant, okay? So, um, so again, if you see that the, the price of making a change significantly outweighs the benefits to achieve from that sometimes you could forego that change okay but then if you're making changes to the inputs that is first order change now if the changes to the inputs do not correct the problem then you might need to change your operation strategy which is referred to as second order change okay now we do know that um, we all operate within an environment and for every environment you've got external influences and in most cases these external influences the system cannot control them those influences control the system so the only way a system can survive under external influences is to develop some level of flexibility so some of these influences to a business could be political, environmental, social, technological, economic, or legal. Okay, now this is what's referred to as the pestle analysis, as you would see in some of the materials um, we've made available to you. Now, when an external force forces a change on a system, on your system, then that is the third order change or forced change. And usually, this triggers a change in the business strategy, okay? So, so again, take note of that. Your first order change, input goes well. If that doesn't work, you change your operation strategy, which is second order change. Um, then third order change is imposed by environment, okay? And then you've got the last type of change, which is fourth order change, which is triggered by the system itself um, in an attempt to be proactive. So this fourth order change is the only proactive change, and that forms part of what you'll be learning in uh, week um, S plus 13, um, the last week of, the last teaching week of the lecture where you read, where we study about continuous improvement in operations, okay? So that is triggered by the system in an attempt to improve in anticipation of a change from the environment, okay? Now, um, there are other factors we we'll look at efficiency and effectiveness factors um, in um, S plus week six, and these are examples of efficiency measures and effectiveness. Now, you need both, so none is more important than the other. 
but they're both needed for the smooth running of any business okay so um i hope that gives a bit of a context to the entire unit now remember um for mohammed who will be teaching you supply chain management each of these um inputs to the operations process will need to be moved from place to place and you need to also determine their quantity you need to determine how long they stay within the system and that's all part of supply chain management okay which you'll be doing with them um, which you'll be studying with mohammed now again what will the impact of any of these do to your business so it's very important to predict their quantity and then uh, when they arrive which is something um, which is sometimes referred to as lead time now when you make your products also let's assume you develop a product that is not common or you modify a particular product you would want to own the trademark okay you would want to own it so that no one can again take advantage of the efforts the research and development efforts you've invested into creating that unique product which again is part of the things Tim will be talking Tim Jones will be talking to you about during the intellectual property lecture okay now again people will need to communicate with people and uh, people will need to interact with resources again that would all be part of the people uh, from Tim Jones again next week and the communication which Mohammed will be taking you um, I think is in S plus week five if I'm not mistaken okay so um, again all your information we need to be stored within a reporting system or a technical database um, typically in operations management those are referred to as enterprise resource planners okay those or enterprise resource planning systems um, some they call them computerized management systems um, they, they have different names different brands and uh, so on and so forth okay so they help you collate collect and collate information so that you can easily retrieve them when when there is the need to make decisions based on such um, information okay so um, I think we are 